Welcome back here to Mini of Loveland, part of that Coast BMW dealership group. Our final segment of the Ram Report. Tom Hilbert joining us here on set. Brian Roth back with you. Of the Colorado State Rams rolling here this past weekend. They uh, get victories over UNLV and Fresno State. Congratulations on the wins. Two very big wins, Tom, as, as the conference race is really tightening down the it's stretch. It's really tightening, and those two teams are key players in it. You know, and we lost to Fresno at Fresno. So um, that was a big win for us and a tough match. And UNLV Thursday night, UNLV seems to be tailing a little bit at the end of the season. So they were a little bit easier to beat <clears throat> than I expected them to be. But Fresno did exactly what we expected. They came in and competed really well. Uh, Corinne Wild is a great player and really competed and made. The match was an exciting one, four set win for us. Uh, and the fans had a great time. And, had some drama to it. Yeah, the the four set match in that Fresno uh, match on Saturday, you guys cruised in a couple of those. You beat them 25 10 in the second, and sometimes you can get a team to fold up the tents when you do that. That didn't happen. Though. It didn't happen. They came back and competed very well in the, in the third set and were ahead of us, I think, maybe by six points at one point. And we just kind of chipped away at it and uh, got it tied at 24. And um, and end up winning it in a, in a really great fashion. And those kind of experiences are important for your team because they need to know that, hey, when our backs are against the wall, we can perform and we can play well. And uh, so it was great. What, a, what an achievement, though, in that Fresno State match. Megan Port, who has just been outstanding her entire career for you, uh, one of the top medals that you've had, certainly. She had a thousand, went over the thousand kill career mark and 500 blocks now in her career, just the third player ever in CSU history. I know, and, and people who know volleyball, that, that's hard to do. I mean, it's hard to do. She's been a four-year starter. She has perfected the craft of blocking better than anyone that we've coached here. And, and uh, she's also just very consistent night in and night out. And it, so you don't do that without a lot of hard work and, and a lot of consistency. It's going to be fun as a, as a coach. You, you obviously go out, you recruit a kid like Megan Ford. You, you're hoping she's going to be a good player. You, you, you always recruit based on potential. What can they do for us down the line? I imagine she exceeded all your expectations. She really did. Um, however, you know, we signed her and redshirted her. She was a, uh, probably the third best player on a very, very good club team out of uh, the, the Twin Cities in Minnesota. And um, some other people came in late trying to get her, and she had decided to come to our place. We redshirted her. She started for four years. She's had some really good mentors in McKenna Barnes and Tessa Nelson. But now she is the teacher. Yeah, no question. That was a Fresno State match on, on uh, Saturday. But Thursday, you had the big orange out match against mm -hmm. UNLV. I, I know the crowd really helped you in that. And, and UNLV was tied with you going into that match. They were. And, it, you know, they've, they've had some uh, tough matches. They beat lots of people at home. We were fortunate enough to win at UNLV, which was a big win for us. Um, and, you know, they, they're, they're good. They have two solid outside hitters. I think they're coached very well. And, uh, you know, for us to win that in three sets, it was really good. So Colorado State sitting at 17 and 7. They're 10 and 3 in the Mountain West Conference with three conference matches coming up here. Uh, you get UNC, though, first on Tuesday. It's a non conference match in the late stages here of the conference season. Talk about that because I, I know UNC has their program rolling pretty good. They have a solid squad. They do. They're always good. And, um, you know, they have a kid named Kelly Arnold, who is out of Berthoud, who uh, has been a four-year starter for them. She's really a good player and has been one of the better players in the Big Sky Conference her entire career. Uh, I think they do a good job at UNC, and I think that'll be a good match for us to play because they're fast and they're competitive and it'll keep us very alert. Um, and, and we can prepare for Air Force and for Boise State with a day each, yeah. you know what I mean? So we just have to be careful next week not to practice too long and wear our kids out because they gotta be fresh for the games. Yeah, there will be three games in one week. Uh, Thursday, Saturday, Air Force and Boise State both on the road. Your thoughts on those two matches as you know, again, you guys virtually have to win out. Yeah, Air Force is better than they've ever been. Um, Matt McShane's doing a good job there and they supposedly they have a basketball game that night too. They're, the cadets are gonna be filled that little arena. And then um, <clears throat> Boise State, fastest, most complex offense in our league right now, hard to prepare for, but we've got some matchup things that help us. 
So if we just take care of business, uh, we should go away with two, two well, victories. Marching towards another Mountain West title. Best hope of so. luck. Hope so. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. That's head coach Tom Hilbert. That's going to do it for the Ram Report for Tom Hilbert and, of course, Jim McElwain. I'm Brian Roth saying so long here on the Ram Report.